The Affinity trial was designed to test the addition of pertuzumab to standard either non-anthracycline or anthracycline containing chemotherapy backbone along with trastuzumab. So patients were randomized to getting standard chemotherapy with uh, trastuzumab and uh, that was given either with or without pertuzumab, both during the chemotherapy phase, uh, overlapping with the taxane, as well as during the maintenance phase. The study uh, enrolled patients that had higher risk node negative cancers, defined as cancers that were greater than one centimeter, or if they were in the 0 0.5 to one centimeter range, they had to be high grade or hormone receptor negative. And of course, it also included node positive patients and uh, both hormone receptor statuses were, um, were included. And the main outcome measure here was the standard invasive uh, disease-free survival. And the study did meet its endpoint, showing a statistically significant improvement in disease-free survival. The core take-home message of this trial was that pertuzumab does indeed add uh, to the benefit. Uh, it was a statistically significant difference. Uh, the, the absolute difference was rather small in the lower risk patients, but I think all of us would agree that in higher risk patients, the, uh, the, the use of pertuzumab is clearly justified. Fortunately, there didn't seem to be added risks in terms of cardiotoxicity, which is one of the risks that we're always concerned about with HER2-targeted therapy. The number of patients that had cardiac events was no higher in the pertuzumab-containing arm. There were some toxicities that were more, most notably diarrhea, which is a known side effect of, of adding pertuzumab, particularly to the chemotherapy part, and that was seen at a higher rate. Well, I think that uh, the Affinity trial was really an adjuvant trial where patients had surgery first, so there it's a little more defined. I think for the most part, stage two or higher, even stage one, they were included in the study, uh, but, but higher risk, uh, that's probably where the controversy is, is where you draw the risk line, but uh, certainly for higher risk, node positive or even stage 2A, uh, that would be a, an appropriate uh, therapy. The, these patients, again, are at higher risk for recurrence. Uh, the, the additional thing I would say, though, is in, in patients who get neoadjuvant therapy, these were not included in, in the affinity trial, but we also we know what their risk is, and, and those patients um, already had pertuzumab approved by the FDA on the basis of a higher complete pathologic response rate, and it was approved specifically with the chemotherapy. But I think as you look at that trial, the Neosphere trial uh, and the Trifena trial, those were the two neoadjuvant trials uh, that led to the approval of pertuzumab in the neoadjuvant setting, and you combine that with the findings of the Affinity trial, I would say that our standard now is going to be to use both trastuzumab and pertuzumab with chemotherapy, and then use them for uh, the maintenance phase as well. We do not have a randomized trial that really tests only the maintenance phase part of it, where, for example, the patients might get trastuzumab and pertuzumab along with chemo, and then one group gets only the trastuzumab and the other group gets both antibodies for uh, maintenance. We don't have that study, so my default really is to use both antibodies for the duration. Really what it boils down to is what is the residual risk you're predicting for this patient? Uh, because we know that the odds of recurrence were reduced by, by about a third. And a third of a very small residual number is going to be a, a small number indeed. If, if the patient only has a 3, 4, 5 percent risk of recurrence, they're only lowering it by maybe 1 percent. Uh, however, uh, anything that's higher than that, now you get into uh, reasonable, reasonable numbers in terms of difference between recurrence and not. So really the best metric to use, of course this is an estimation, but is to use the literature to guide you into predicting what is the residual risk that this patient has. I would say that someone with inflammatory breast cancer, even who did achieve a complete pathologic response, still has a good 20, 25, maybe even high as 30 percent risk of recurrence uh, despite uh, having a PCR.